and welcome inside the Backstage Pass. Always a brand new day and, of course, a brand new show and some good stuff coming up this week, too, as well. Stay tuned to the SportsGuysPodcast.com, uh, uh, powered by that website and out there, KKTC True Country 99.9, and presented by our friends over at uh, Bangtail Whiskey and the CadenGordonShow.com, today's best country mix in Boston, Massachusetts, out there, too, and, of course, High Tide Country dot net please to welcome in uh my featured artist of the day singer songwriter so we try to go that route for more songwriters today too as well a uh, hit songwriter he's done it all man he's been around the business a long time uh steve dean to the program steve how you doing sir brandon i'm doing great man it's good to see you yes sir thank good you to for see having you. me and good to catch up here well i tell you what you've been around this thing as i mentioned there at the top uh, for a long time you've seen it all done it all you've had many many uh hits recorded by a number of the great big time artists out there over your career I guess what kind of sticks out, you know, when you look back and we've gone through this rough time of COVID and now you see streaming kind of taking over and the industry changing in a lot of ways, kind of reflect on some of the best memories and some of the highlights of your career for me. Well, I can tell you that back in the, uh, when I first got in the business in, in February of 1982, because I remember it well, at Tom Collins Music. And when uh, they came down and told me that, that uh, Ronnie Millsap was going to record my song, Don't Your Memory Ever Sleep at Night. And I thought, man, this was my second cut ever. I, and I just wish Ronnie a happy birthday. He just had his 81st birthday mm -hmm. this past week. And so I uh, wrote a little article in, in my Facebook about that. And But he that was a, an amazing thing because I got to go into the studio mm -hmm. and watch him sing my song and play it in the studio. And it was, it was just one of those things for a young kid out of Arkansas uh, getting thrown into the big time like that. It was great. Mm -hmm. uh, Sylvia actually had made my, got my first recording on Sylvia. Do you remember her, her the song? I uh, do remember Sylvia. Yeah, I do. yeah. She had a song called Nobody, which wasn't yes. mine, unfortunately. My song was called Not Tonight. And that was my mm -hmm. very first cut mm -hmm. uh, on a major label artist. And so anyway, and I remember when Tom Collins called me down to his office and he said, um, Hey man, uh, this album sold pretty good. And I'm, I'm writing you a check you're, you're officially in the music, making money in the music business now. And I was like, wow. I mean, I walked out of his office, like on a cloud. I couldn't believe it, you know? And, and then we got a gold record for Sylvia's. She sold uh, the album, sold 500,000 copies. So, you know, I, I made some money on my very first cut, which was pretty unusual. And I got the cut on the sixth day that I was at Collins music. Mm -hmm. I came in off the street and, um, and I wrote with a, a guy named John Gerard. You may remember him. He yep. was a fantastic writer. Mm -hmm. He was my first co-writer. <laughs> and, uh, and so we wrote Not Tonight together. And um, that was amazing, too, when, when Tom and, and Sylvia and a guy named Dennis Morgan, you may know who that is, too, came down the hall and they were playing Not Tonight. And they opened up the door where we were. And, and um, there they were playing Not Tonight. And I'm just going, is this really <laughs> happening? You know? <laughs> It was pretty cool. It's a great feeling too, as well. To know that your work and that body of work. Let's let's reach back to. I'm, I'm gonna go this too. I say my younger days, at least for me. Uh, this big viral one comes over, and it's one of the most played country songs on country radio. And I actually got a chance to talk to him uh, here on this show. And of course, I had Sylvia too, which has been a fantastic resume oh, yeah. we've built here with those artists. Uh, Rodney Atkins and this song called oh. "Watching You" comes out, and it's just yeah. like viral everywhere. Social media, I guess, about that time. 07, 08 comes out. You start to see the smartphones become more of this. And I, I want to say that's about the time probably Spotify and some of these other streaming services you know kicked in. That, you're right, man. That yeah. I look back on that. I felt I kind of got the feeling uh, after after the fact that that might have been one of the last songs that was like the way it used to be. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? It's because it was still things were still rocking along pretty good. And that we actually wrote that in 2005. And it was uh, number one in 2007, I believe, is when the when we had the party. But uh, yeah, that was a uh, that was still we were still going in the office and, and writing a song. And we came out came out that day and we told our song plugger, "Hey, we wrote a pretty good song with Rodney Atkins today." You know, we were just you know, and they were like, "Oh, good. Um, what else you got?" <laughs> they didn't know you know what we had done. So it was amazing. We thought it was a really good song. You know, the best a memories. Really good song. Yeah, it, it was. And, and I tell you, I, I've talked to two of my, of my favorite people here on the show, Richard Sturban, William Lee Golden, 
uh, oh. the Oaks, the track, uh, it takes a little rain. Yes, I sir. believe that was Grammy nominated and it was Grammy nominated. On that. Yeah. Yes, sir. It was, um, that was a, a, that was a great cut to have because it was, we got notified like in January of whatever it was, 1988, maybe mm -hmm. we got notified in January. So if, writers, when we're writing for me anyway, and I'm, I'm speaking for other writers too, I think, but you know, we, we don't slow down. We keep writing every day. We write all these songs. Mm -hmm. Maybe a year goes by and nothing has been cut. And so you're going, wow, you know, and, and uh, then, you know, it gets on into uh, January of a, of a new year and you get this song cut and they call us and tell us it's going to be the first single off of their, uh, their album that's coming mm -hmm. out. First, the first album that Jimmy Bowen was their producer. And uh, man, when I heard them singing this, I, I put headphones on and I could see, I could visually see all four of them standing there singing when the harmonies came in. And it was really, really great. And I got one other thing I'd like to share about that is I went yeah. to a Country Weekly magazine Christmas party with the Roys. I was working with uh, Lee and Lane Roy. They were mm -hmm. the Roys, brother, sister duo. And they took me to the Christmas uh, party for uh, Country Weekly. And I saw Dwayne standing over there and I thought, man, I'm going to go over there because they were over there. Lee and Elaine were doing an interview and so I'm going to go over and say hi to, to Dwayne, reintroduce myself. And I walked over there to Dwayne and he goes, Steve, thank you for the song. And that was years later. And I was just like, oh, my gosh, <laughs> you know, that's amazing. You don't get that doesn't get any better. Mm hmm. It's it's uh, amazing, and like I said, these are, I mean, hits that live on for a long time too. I tell you what, we're gonna have you play one. Speaking of those hits uh, coming back, a guy that people might know. Let's see, uh, yeah, he said sixty plus number ones. Uh, got him George Strait, <laughs> one that you yeah. wrote. Uh, coming up here in a little bit on the show, we'll take a time out, uh, get that guitar ready to roll, and come back, and you'll see which track that is here on ninety nine nine KKTC True Country. Uh, Taos, New Mexico, Colorado, of course, HighTideCountry.net, Oklahoma City, and of course, Texas, always powered by the Sports Guys uh, podcast.com shows live there, and of course, on the YouTube channel. A word from our sponsors, more with Steve Dean here on the show. Stay tuned. The Caden Gordon Show, today's Man. best country mix, is a two hour show playing independent and mainstream country music you know and love. Be sure to check it out at thecadengordonshow.com for more information on the show. The bangtail pour is comprised of a sweet corn mash base. The front has a subtle sweetness and not too sharp. It has notes of a medium char or white oak for a smoky flavor in the middle. And the tail has a super smooth and warm finish. Go behind the scenes with some of the biggest artists in music today with the Backstage Pass, powered by the SportsGuysPodcast.com. Join Brandon Morrill and his co-host, Kirsty Kraus, as they talk to rising stars and legends about their music careers. Listen to their latest tracks and learn fun facts about the men and women behind the music you love. And be sure to tune in to the Backstage Pass Monday through Friday from 3.30 to 6.30, powered by the SportsGuysPodcast.com. And welcome in to the Backstage Pass... And back here with hit songwriter Steve Dean on the Backstage Pass. Tomorrow, Canadian country artist Nicole Ray will stop by. And then on uh, Friday, good one for you, too. Member of the Canadian Country Music Hall of Fame. And you might remember a song called I'm a Road Hammer. Jason McCoy will stop by here on Friday. Of course, Saturday into Sunday, we'll catch up with him. Uh, one of the hottest artists out there, Zach Top, coming here on the program, bringing back a little bit of that 90s country uh, flavor. Well, I talked about that, Steve, before the break. Uh, Roundabout way. What a yeah, song sure. for George Strait. And let's hear your performance here on the show as of right now. Love it. Okay. Yeah. I wrote this song with my buddy, Will Nance. Mm -hmm. Matter of fact, I was writing with Will today at, down at uh, Curb, Curb uh, Publishing. Mm -hmm. And um, this was one of those things where back in the, we had, didn't have computers, but we had, we used to keep our song ideas on little slips of paper. And we were both going through our slips of paper and Will was reading off some, some of his. And he said, a few of them. Then he said roundabout way. And he said a few more. And I go, Hey man, go back to that roundabout way. That's a cool sounding thing. It's got a ring to it. And he goes, okay. So we started writing it. And this is what, this is what we came up with. <laughs> this was go. the uh, first track on the carrying your love with me CD. That's the beginning of it. Mm -hmm. Then it's been on a lot of other, uh, you know, repackaged uh, George Strait's uh, albums. So it's been pretty cool. Anyway, roundabout way. <laughs> friends can 
hotel. I took her leaving. Well, that's kind of right. Cause when I'm out with them, I don't let her memory rule the night. For the most part, I'm okay. But I still miss her. for George Strait out there too and one of the best songs ever written in country music too I used to play that all the time too back in early days well, thank you, man. I appreciate of that. radio we spend even you know what out of that too we're still doing it on KKTC True Country yeah. 99.9 too as well up in uh, Towski Town and of course uh, Colorado back here with Steve Dean the backstage pass and at high tide country uh, net. appreciate you guys listening seven nights a week 10 mountain time out there too i know it's been cold out there in ski town but please appreciate you guys listening to all the great music shelly g in the morning and a whole lot more there on kktc out there too as well hey another one i remember uh and worked with so many legends in the industry no doubt in these songs alabama and jeff oh. Cook and this group and, and this little song comes out called southern star that was <laughs> one of the That's best ever written. Talk about that one and just reflect on Alabama and what they've done. Of course, legends in country music. Oh my gosh. I was, um, I had just moved over to Nashville and I moved over in 1980. And I'm, I thank my father for suggesting that I moved to Nashville because music never did go away with me. I started writing when I was nine or 10 years old. And, mm -hmm. um, but there really was, and from Little Rock, there was really, there's a lot of music down there, but there's no music business down there. So uh, he suggested that I just get all the songs I've been writing and go to Nashville and get some established artists to record my songs. And I thought, Dad, that is an amazing idea. So I packed up my little Toyota SR5 with my suitcase and a guitar and got a little apartment and lived and started becoming a songwriter. So about a year had gone by and there was a taping that was going to happen at the Grand Ole Opry house and the tickets were free, which was awesome because I really didn't have the money for tickets back then. And so I went down there by myself and sat down in my seat and watched June and Johnny and Conway and Loretta, hmm. little Jimmy Dickens, Dolly Parton. I saw them all that night, but this group came out and this light bulb went on in my head that hearing my dad go, 
get some established artists to record your songs. Mm-hmm. Well, Alabama came out and played uh, Old Flame. Well, I had never heard of Alabama yet, but I heard Old Flame and I saw the way the crowd reacted to it. And I thought, well, maybe they're not established yet, but they're going to be established really soon. So that had been in like in 1981. Mm-hmm. That's when I said, I'm going to get a song to Alabama. Nine years later, <laughs> actually david allen cole cut that song too two years mm-hmm. before that wow interesting, oh, I love the history. interesting. yeah <laughs> i love that too and yeah, i'll tell you you know one of my my favorite shows i ever did too another great artist that stands out there for so much of what uh it means to be a country musician i mean very well established uh lee greenwood a lot of working experience with with yeah. lee and, and of course what he meant to put out those those big anthems, you know, for country, yeah. God bless the USA and all these great songs, but you had, a, uh, he had actually had a cut of yours too, as well. I did. I had, that was my very first number <clears> one <throat> song was on Lee Greenwood. Mm-hmm. It was uh, hearts aren't made to break. They're made to love. I wrote that with Roger Murrah. Um, I had a little piece of music that I had a, a group had cut this other song that I had written that had, it wasn't like, it was similar to that, but it was, uh, I brought that into Roger said, what about something like this? And, and uh, he jumped on that and we we wrote Hearts Aren't Made to Break. And this this unknown artist put it on hold uh, after we got it demoed. And we were like, all right. You know, I was getting, thinking I was getting ready to get a cut. Then they called back and said, well, he took it off hold. He's not going to do it. And then the next day they called back and said, Lee Greenwood's going to cut that song. And we were like, oh, my God, because <laughs> he was that was his ninth number one in a row. That's amazing. <laughs> Just what, cool. a, what a gentleman he is, too, as well. Yes, Definitely, he's a uh, great guy. He is a great, great guy. Can great I tell guy. one little story about him? Yeah, Real go cool. for it. Well, uh, I, my friend Bill White, you may know Bill White. He's a, yeah, a Bill. Bill Day, and uh, he and he and I do a lot of corporate shows together. And Bill mm-hmm. called me, and, and we were going to do this corporate show. And the guy who was putting the show on told us that, well, I'm not sure yet, but I think Lee Greenwood's going to show up at this mm-hmm. event. And so I was like, wow, we'll call him back and see if he would care if I sang Hearts Aren't Made to Break if he shows up. Mm-hmm. So uh, <laughs> the guy called us back and said, tell Steve that Lee said, yes, sing the song and make it the closer for the round. And I'm like, OK, so we're <laughs> up there doing our round. And so it's, I'm, I'm going last uh, on that. Mm-hmm. And I, I look up in the back and poking his head out the door was Lee. And so I started into Hearts Aren't Made to Break. Mm -hmm. And then here comes Lee around and gets on the mic with me and sings harmony with me on hearts aren't made to break. And I'm just like, Oh, holy crap. This is awesome. Yeah. He's a great guy. I love Lee. I tell you what, there's so much uh, stories that you could tell them all day. So we're going to have to split this show in two, no doubt. And have you back on as, as soon as, uh, all the great collection of works come out, even more stuff as you're keeping busy today too. We'll come back and we'll talk about that. Uh, we'll have you play another song. Of course, we'll get into rapid fire. We, we talked about the King, uh, George Strait, but there's another great piece of music too, and she's keeping busy out there. The Queen of country music too, as well, that you've had some uh, definitely great relationships with out there too, and, and a big song that uh, she cut for also a big album out there too, as well. We'll let that be a tease. We go to break. It is KKTC True Country. 99.9, of course, out there, hightidecountry.net, and powered by the sportsguyspodcast.com. More with Steve Dean here. It is the Backstage Pass. Stay tuned for more and performance coming up. The Kate and Gordon Show is a two-hour show playing the best in country music. So check it out at thecadeandgordonshow.com. Again, that is thecadeandgordonshow.com. The bangtail pour is comprised of a sweet corn mash base, The front has a subtle sweetness and not too sharp. It has notes of a medium char or white oak for a smoky flavor in the middle. And the tail has a super smooth and warm finish. Go behind the scenes with some of the biggest artists in music today with the Backstage Pass, powered by the SportsGuysPodcast.com. Join Brandon Morrill and his co-host Kirsty Krause as they talk to rising stars and legends about their music careers. Listen to their latest tracks and learn fun facts about the men and women behind the music you love. And be sure to tune in to the Backstage Pass Monday through Friday from 3.30 to 6.30, powered by the SportsGuysPodcast.com. And welcome in to the Backstage Pass... And back here with Steve Dean on the program, the sportsguyspodcast.com. Uh, you can always be there for archived shows and visit that very website. And, of course, out there uh, seven nights a week, 10 Mountain Time, 
if you're still awake or listen to it the next morning too as well. <laughs> Shelly G in the morning, KKTC True Country 99.9 and HightideCountry.net. Thanks to Bangtail Whiskey and our friends over at the CadenGordonShow.com. Today's best country mix. Back here with hit songwriter Steve Dean on the show. We talked about the king, so let's get into the queen a little bit because they say she's one of them, and I'd love to, I hope to run into her one day, at least take a picture, that kind of thing. It would be a dream interview for me. Uh, queen Reba, no doubt, has done so much for this industry. What, 40-something, 50-something number one hits? Reason they call her a queen of country. Great hit and walk on. Uh, talk about this, the idea behind that, and what a great song that was. Well, thank you. Um, actually, it was one of those songs where I wrote with a guy named Lonnie Williams, who's God rest his soul. Mm -hmm. um, we had this idea of walk on somehow. It was just one of those days where we came up with an idea, but uh, and it kind of turned out, it started out kind of, uh, let's see, it was kind of bluesier than the way they cut it. I mean, it was like, ain't life one, one, see, ain't, ain't, ain't. I can't the right key here. Absolutely, yeah. Ain't life wonderful? Nothing, everything going right. And of course, that was just uh, it was just kind of R and B ish flavor. And uh, Rich Alves, who was in our company at the time, mm -hmm. our song plugger, who actually him and uh, Lynn Gann both were plugging that song over to MCA for Reba. But he said, "What if we put a kind of a." you know, really jamming beat to it. And I said, well, yeah, let's try it. So they demoed it that way and, and sent it over to, to Reba. And yes, they cut it. It was on Sweet 16. Plus it's been on Reba's Greatest Hits Volume 2, mm -hmm. which also uh, that album uh, earned a Grammy. Wow. Um, and then recently she had this, uh, let's see if I can get it right, Revisited, Remastered, and Remixed. Correct. I'll be up. I it's and cool. there's three CDs in there. And what she did was she re-recorded Walk On. So I have a whole new version of Walk On mm -hmm. that she's done because she wanted it. The record was great. The way they did the record was fantastic. But she's been performing that song in her shows all these years. And she wanted to put it out, uh, put it on record the way she does it live. Mm -hmm. So it's very, very cool the way they do it. It's just like they're I mean, I remember seeing it uh, on a Thanksgiving Day show that she did probably, gosh, I don't even know how long ago it was. I can't keep up with the time, but she had like a, a choir singing with her on the back, made mm -hmm. in the backdrop there. You know, it was really amazing, the whole thing. So, yeah, Reba, uh, I love you, lady. She's awesome. <laughs> She's one of the greatest uh, of all time, too. Well, I know you've got a, a collection of works out there getting ready to release more. I hope that definitely the audience clamors more music out there. Uh, I tell you what, let's do a performance, and I want to talk to you about one that I got a chance to uh, give a media review on in a press release that I, I, I believe we did, uh, but I, I definitely love the song Spirit of Christmas. Okay. We'll talk about that, but definitely uh, Dealer's Choice. Uh, let's have you perform another one, or you know what? Hey, good to, I, I, I think of Christmas, Steve, as year-round, so that's just me. Yeah, okay. <laughs> I mean, I left my tree up, but I didn't take it down to like last weekend. So I, I know, up. I put mine up right about two weeks before <laughs> Thanksgiving, we took it down, I don't know, two weeks ago. Yeah. So uh, the spirit of Christmas to me with, with the song you, you put out there uh, this past November was on the playlist and just a great holiday uh, well, tune you. to put out there too. Uh, I guess talk about that for us a little bit, then we'll have you play one. Okay. Sounds good. Uh, as far as the spirit of Christmas, uh, that writing of that song and, and putting oh, that yeah, out. Okay. Talk well, about just the making of spirit of Christmas. It's not exactly a, a happy Christmas song, but I, I mean, it's actually for, uh, uh, it was kind of a, I wrote it really, it was really like a prayer. Mm -hmm. uh, to help me find the spirit of Christmas because uh, we got, I, I, I I'm from Little Rock and it was one of the longest trips I ever made back home from Nashville. Uh, cause we had found out my mom was diagnosed with Alzheimer's. Mm -hmm. And so I was thinking, man, cause I knew it wasn't going to be good, you know, cause it just keeps that. That's the worst disease I think ever that keeps getting worse. And my dad took care of her for 10 years. Didn't put, he took her, kept her in the house and didn't, didn't take her anywhere. And uh, anyway, so I got home and, and went straight to our family piano. It's been in the family for uh, decades. And I just started playing that lick that's in the song. And the words just started spilling out. Um, so I, I've dedicated it to my mother. 
my father just passed October 3rd, this past October 3rd. So I decided to go ahead and dedicate it to him too. I mean, he, he's a big inspiration in my life. So is my mother. He, my mother was a musician, singer, uh, not professional, but she was a great pianist. I mean, she played the, that piano all the time. And my dad was a writer, not a songwriter, but like he wanted to write, you know, articles for like, look, in life back in his day, you know, which would be like people today, or I don't even know what, he, what magazines are out anymore, but you know what I'm saying? He was a writer. I got, I got a little bit of both of them uh, injected into my soul, actually a lot of them. And uh, so anyway, that was the song. Just, I was asking God just to help me get into the spirit of Christmas because mm -hmm. I was having a hard time with it and it just seemed so unfair, you know, that she was going to have to go through that. Anyway, yeah. Yeah, and, and it made me think about that too, because I I also last fall uh, just unexpectedly lost my dad, uh, Steve, yeah. in yeah in November, and it just it it was one of those that just stuck with me. I mean, obviously that is something that everybody can pray on their own time to their respective right. denomination, and take what they will from a song like that. Kind of a sad situation, but I also kind of dedicated it to my father as well for what he well, thank instilled you, man. in me. That's, for that's what I was talking about. Yeah. it would be for Anybody, I mean, I work with veterans a lot too, mm -hmm. and I know they have struggles uh, in holidays a lot of times, especially Christmas time, yeah. uh, especially ve veterans that have been in combat. Um, I co founded an organization called Freedom Sings USA, and we pair songwriters, professional songwriters, with veterans. They tell us their story and we make a song out of it. So uh, that's part of the that's part of it too. I mean, I really really feel for anybody having a hard time and maybe they could get something like out of that little prayer uh to find the spirit of christmas so thanks for asking them. oh it's great it's a great song and it definitely is a meaning in it that just goes beyond any story somebody can tell too and that's you know praying to the higher power and understanding that it's just the, the cycle of life and we all go through it and that's it's right. part of uh part of us but i hope we get through the holiday season which we did it's still tough and no doubt but uh it, it just lingers on and I guess time can, can, can heal all wounds for uh, different people in, in different ways who, who we all go through that. Uh, well, I tell you what, I love the guitar playing. Uh, I, I'm definitely, let's have you play another one, Steve. I okay, want to hear sure. another one. Uh, dealer's choice, whatever you'd like. Dealer's to play. choice. How about, <laughs> he said, I've been watching you, dad ain't that cool. I'm your buckaroo. I want to be like you and eat all my food. Grow as tall as you are. Driving through town, just my boy and me, with a happy meal in his booster seat, knowing that he couldn't have the toy till his nuggets were gone. A green traffic light turned straight to red. I hit my brakes and mumbled under my breath. His fries went flying and his orange drink covered his back. Then the four-year-old said a four-letter word. Started with this, and I was concerned. I said, son, now where'd you learn to talk like that? He said, I've been watching you. Dad ain't that cool. I'm your buckaroo. I want to be like you. Eat all my food. Grow as tall as you are. We got cowboy boots and camo pants. Yeah, we're just alike. Hey, ain't we? I've been watching you. We got back home and I went to the barn, bowed my head and I prayed real hard. I said, Lord, please help me help my stupid self. And this side of bedtime later that night, turning on my son's movie do night light. He crawled out of bed and he got down Folded his little hands, spoke to God like he was talking to a friend. I said, son, where'd you learn to pray like that? He 
said, I've been watching you. Dad ain't that cool. I'm your buckaroo. I want to be like you. Eat all my food. Grow as tall as you. We like fixing things and holding mama's hand. Yeah, we're just alike. Hey, we did. I want to do everything you do. Because I've been watching you. In my eyes, I wrapped him in a hug and said, My little boy is a growing up. He said, But when I'm big, I'll still know what to do. Cause I've been watching you, Dad ain't that cool. I'm your buckaroo, I want to be like you. And eat all my food, grow as tall as you are. Then I'll be a strong Superman. We'll be just alike. Hey, won't we then? And I can do everything you do. Cause I've been watching you. Yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. There it is, watching you. <laughs> it's songwriter Steve Dean. Of course, Rodney Atkins, big cut right there. Most played song on radio back in that 2007 era, too. I was spinning it, too, just like a lot of other radio <laughs> DJs uh, back then, too. It was too, amazing, as well. so, all right. I appreciate great. you spinning it, too. <laughs> <laughs> hey, man, song like that, too, what Rodney put his vocals to, it was it was a powerful, powerful tune. Spoke to a yeah. lot a lot of parents out there, too, that go through it. Now I'm a parent of my own, so I got a little girl. Well, and me, it's too. Like, yeah, we're <laughs> watching them I every day. Got a little day. boy too. <laughs> <laughs> Watch them every day. Might'll be uh, four coming up here in uh, about a couple of months now. Four well, years. He old. was about the same age as Rodney's was. Right? Really <laughs> I saw my son was on him. He was a little, quite a bit older actually. He was probably like maybe. <laughs> uh, he was probably about fifteen. Fifteen. No, it's it's. Uh, she's already used that. Started with S, and I was concerned. Oh yeah, man. <laughs> <laughs> that particular lyric, especially when. Uh, Mom or dad can belt it out for just whatever situation occurs, but uh, yeah, she uh, we 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 nipped that in the bud pretty quick and told her that yeah. that's that's not appropriate. <laughs> hey, when uh, when not doing music, what do you enjoy doing for fun? As far as some hobbies, what do you enjoy? Well, let's see. Well, I I love old radios. Um, mm -hmm. Like I'm not talking about from the 50s. I'm talking about from the 30s. Okay. Like um, you know the cathedral styles. I mean, I I had a I got a kind of. Uh, wrapped up in those for a while I'm, I'm i just enjoy the collection now but uh that's something working on them too actually getting an old radio to work now i'm a very amateur electrician my dad was an amateur electrician and what i learned from him makes me a amateur amateur electrician um but i knew enough to uh to kind of get my way through like changing some capacitors and things i could do that and uh and then when you plug the thing in and it starts to work you're going all right it works so uh that's been a lot of fun doing like old philco is pretty much the mm -hmm. the uh radio of choice for some reason i picked philco i don't know why but mm -hmm. uh so that was a that was something i mean i, I enjoy a college football there you go right. uh <laughs> razorbacks actually Arkansas. Of, there you go no yeah. razorback fan even though we're not so good right now, but I'm mm -hmm. hoping for the best. Every year, I hope for the best. <laughs> yeah, that's all you can do when it comes to uh, yeah. being a fan out there. Support your uh, your squad, no doubt about it, that's too. Right. And go Razorbacks, no doubt, too. Love that program. Respect them. Bobby Petrino did so much for that program for a long time, too. He and, did. And, he's, and back believe, he's back, too, right? As the OC now. As an yeah. offensive coordinator, that's yeah. correct. I mean, came so, from my I'm first. I love about that, really. Uh, I always liked Bobby. I just hated yeah. what happened. But, I mean, he was, I thought he was a fan. He was the best mm -hmm. coach that we had had in a long time. Yeah, definitely comes down to it. And of course, that was with Texas A&M when Jimbo Fisher was was down here, but the changing of the guard now yep. back with Arkansas uh, Little Rock out there too. Hey, what was the first song you ever sang live in front of a microphone when you took the microphone stage for the first time? What song? The came stage, out? or I mean, I have to say, probably when I was about six years old. Okay. Uh, my uncle Eddie, who uh, probably could have been a country western singer from the late forties into the fifties. I mean, he had that, he was real. He taught me I'm so lonesome. I could cry. <laughs> and he put a microphone in front of my face and, um, and he had put a guitar around me. I didn't know how to play it that well at, at that point. I was just, just begin, really getting started, but 
um, he played the chords and, and, and we sang I'm So Lonesome I Could Cry. So that was the first song uh, in front of a microphone. Now mm -hmm. on stage, uh, hmm, man, that's because uh, I I was on stage a few times, quite a few times in Little Rock before I moved to Nashville and got into the, the professional side of things. Mm -hmm. and, and so I did a lot of talent shows and things like that in Little Rock. And I even did some originals back then, but I can't. You know, probably, you know what? I think I'm going to tell you this might be it. It might be Fast Lanes and Country Roads. Yeah. Um, I was, um, <clears throat> Randy Van Warmer and Jeff Pearson and me formed a, a trio. And um, we had a show, at our very first show, and I sang Fast Lanes and Country Roads, uh, my version of it. Mm -hmm. And um, that's probably was the first song that I sang in front of a live and And I also... Messed it up pretty good. I thought I don't need to rehearse this, and that was a lesson that I learned because I I'm a I'm a freak about rehearsing nowadays. <laughs> Anytime you know I'm doing show that after that I was like, that's not going to happen again. Now not to say I don't screw songs up occasionally because sometimes I just zone out when I'm in the I'm kind of 250 people I'm playing for or whatever mm -hmm. at the listening room and all of a sudden psht, it just goes out of my head you know and I go uh, okay let's start that over again. <laughs> <laughs> no doubt it's uh for one to perfect his craft and continue to do that too uh give me your favorite top two or three your what you own as far as vinyl records go what was your favorite vinyl records that, that you oh, have in your collection okay um well it'd have to be like revolver probably okay. uh by the beatles uh, yep. from the early days um i'm gonna say the maybe the boston Boston album, the very first one that came out, More Than a Feeling, that song mm -hmm. grabbed a hold of me, and pretty much that album had a lot of great, they had several hits off of that album, but um, when I heard Boston on singing on the radio, um, I, went, I went went right into the record store and bought it, and another one was uh, Billy Joel, and I heard Just the Way You Are. I heard that on the radio, and I drove right straight to the record store and bought that record, too. So, <laughs> those are three that are, uh, that were big time influencers for me when mm -hmm. i was you know younger no they're great albums no doubt too i got a collection of my own too and some of the artists you've written for right there in that collection too as well a very historic career and still uh keeping busy with songs like spirit of christmas out there check him out across the uh social platform too and of course uh, performing there in uh, nashville and i hope to be there in a few weeks there for country radio seminar well i'd love to say hey to you man i would man i'd love to come out we got some things we're Working on, we can't make public behind the scenes a chance yeah. for us to maybe appear at a, a bar or two there to do some live remote stuff like this and do some broadcast. Let me know. I, you got my number and everything. So we'll, we'll come down and have you a part of it too, as well. And I would love, love to have that. you pick and play in person. And more details on that coming up. Hopefully, be at a Country Radio Seminar uh, presented by our friends over at uh, the Caden Gordon Show.com, today's best country mix, and our friends at Bangtail Whiskey. Steve, I want to thank you for being on the program today. Hope you enjoyed our chat. And thank we're going to do it again. Okay, I, I sure appreciate you, man. I, and it's a great show, too. Thank you. Well, appreciate you. Yes, sir. Tomorrow, Nicole Ray. And on Friday, uh, Jason McCoy founded the Road Hammers and, of course, had a great solo career. Member of Class of 2023, the, uh, the Canadian Country Music Hall of Fame. Jason McCoy out there, too. And I know Steve knows the Road Hammers <laughs> very well. <laughs> Back in the day, they, they were oh, out yeah. there for truckers. And <laughs> I'm a Road Hammer was all over country radio, both in Canada and, of course, in the States out there, too. We'll see you tomorrow with Nicole Ray here on the program. Thanks to our sponsors and, of course, out there, KKTC, True Country, 99.9, .9, and our friends at HighTideCountry.net. See you soon. Tomorrow, Nicole Ray on the Backstage Pass. Take care.